Inspectors in all but one state surrounding Kentucky have more power to keep their state's railroad crossings safe. Now, more than three years after a train crash killed her son, a Kentucky mom wants lawmakers to give state inspectors that same power. Wave News troubleshooter Mark Stevens says it's her mission to create something positive out of her son's death. Tanya Cerna was blindsided when she got the call that her son had been killed by a train crash. Now she wants state lawmakers to do something to prevent trains from blindsiding other kids. A quick warning, we are showing the crash one time in this story. Finality. Knowing that that's where he died. Knowing that he looked at that train and saw it. Tanya Cerna won't go to this railroad crossing 15 minutes outside Elizabethtown where her youngest son Hunter was fatally injured unless it's for a purpose. The memory of that April day almost four years ago is still too powerful. It was an evening, it was really pretty and um, I just told him, I was like, you just be careful, be home by midnight, I love you. Hunter left that evening to hang out with one of his best friends. Around the same time, a train of four Paducah and Louisville locomotives was heading south. Shortly before 7, Hunter's friend drove down Kraft Road and approached this railroad crossing, guarded by only a yield sign. Her lawyer provided the video the train cameras recorded, showing what happened next. Cerna got that terrible phone call. All I can remember is my husband was out, we were making a vegetable garden, he was out there making a, a vegetable boxes for himself and then also for a friend of ours. And he was over across the street talking to a neighbor, and I just went out screaming. I was like, we've got to go. We've got to go. Hunter and his friend were flown to University Hospital, where he died of his injuries. When I did get home, the first thing I did is I went to his room. And I put on the sweats he had on the night before on. And I laid his picture of him as a toddler and his graduation picture out on the table. And I took a picture of him. The police and railroad said the driver failed to yield. But sheriff's pictures in the train video raise another question. Could Hunter and his friend even see the train through the trees? Cerner believes they couldn't. That accident would have never happened, that my son would be sitting here with me today, not me sitting here with you. Cerner's lawyer had experts check property records. These trees are on the railroad's property. A simulation he created as part of a lawsuit suggests what Hunter and his friend could have seen if the brush was cut back. But unlike nearly every state surrounding Kentucky, the state has no law requiring railroads to clear trees and brush near railroad crossings. Ohio does. We found a case where an inspector ordered CSX to cut back vegetation obscuring three crossings. The railroad did so, and the case was closed. Cerna has now created Hunter's purpose to push for the same type of law here. She wants railroads in Kentucky to be responsible for clearing brush on their property within 300 feet of either side of the crossing. State crossing data shows at least eight of every 10 crossings in Kentucky have no flashing lights or gates. A federal crash predictor also ranked the Kraft Road crossing where Hunter was fatally injured as now having the fourth highest risk of another crash among all of Paducah and Louisville's railroad crossings. Yet the trees and brush we shot this fall have only grown since nearly four years ago. Tracks are dangerous. The Paducah and Louisville Railroad did not return my calls for an interview. In the fall, it put on a public safety demonstration with Operation Lifesaver to encourage the public to be more careful at railroad crossings. If they get stuck on the track, you know, there's really not much we can do. Safety Director Adam Braboy said people can call the railroad to raise issues. If there's any uh, concerns uh, that they have with any, any crossing incident or crossing, whether it be vegetation or whatever, you know, they're always welcome to. Uh, contact the railroad. Uh, you know, we have to work with uh, state and the local officials at times. You know, for for anything that we can do to to help uh, uh, prevent a, a problem. State Senator Matthew Deneen has filed a resolution at the state house to declare August this year as Railroad Crossing Safety Awareness Month. It encourages cities and counties to clear vegetation from their property obscuring railroad crossings, but it doesn't encourage or require railroads to do the same. Cerna says it's a start, but she will still push for an actual law. Had that vegetation not been there, I don't think Hunter would have been in that situation.
Now, Deneen's resolution is supposed to be called for a vote in late February. We've also learned that State Representative Nancy Tate has filed a bill in the last week to make railroads responsible for clearing brush on their property at crossings. However, it has not been assigned a committee hearing as of yet. Mark Stevens, Wave News. Well, thank you.